Thank you very much, Peter. So now we move to our penultimate speaker of today. We have Jamal Jadamba, who is the Chief Executive Officer at Mogul Ventures, who is joining us from a particularly early morning in New York. Jamal was formerly a natural resource and mining investment banker uh, with extensive experience in Mongolia. Uh, he was recognized as the leading financial advisor to the country's mining sector in 2011. So Jamal will now present remotely from New York uh, to us about Mogul Ventures project in Mongolia. So, over to you. as well so uh, without further ado let me just start my presentation and everyone can see this so just to look at the cover of my presentation uh, that is the valley uh, right in front of the tin deposits uh, in our project as you can see, this is an arid, semi-desert region, not populated. Here are the customary disclaimers. So, um, again, uh, going back to my recent visit to China, which certainly reinforced our views on what's going on regionally and globally, um, the experience of last couple of years um, taught us that geography matters a lot. Uh, we are experiencing, for now, I don't think it's permanent, but we're experiencing a period of, uh, of a certain backlash against globalization and regionalization, uh, countries retrenching into their um, geographic spheres of influence. Uh, and from that point of view, um, Mongolia is a very, very strategic country. It is uh, the northern neighbor of China, closest to all of its industrial clusters. Uh, it's very, very close to uh, decision-making in Beijing. It's a two-hour flight uh, from Ulaanbaatar to Beijing, which was the same travel time uh, from Chengdu to Beijing, where I was three weeks ago. Uh, topographically easiest and geographically most direct route between Russia and China goes through Mongolia. Uh, this has been obviously a fact uh, for as long as history, um, but due to events of um, uh, recent times, uh, major projects such as China-Mongolia-Russia Economic Corridor, Power of Siberia 2 pipeline, and other projects are uh, gaining steam. Um, both Russia and China are very, very interested in having a strategic presence in relationship with Mongolia. And if you look at that map, Mongolia juts out on that map like the Amazon jungle of Central Asia, right? This is a country of 3.4 million people, uh, land area of 1.8 million square kilometers. So, um, and in this slide, elephants are in the south uh, and mammoths are in the north. As you can see on this map, um, the geography of Mongolia covers some of the most interesting um, geology in the world. Um, there has been extensive exploration in Southeast Asia for metals, including obviously being a powerhouse of tin production, but there has not been a lot of exploration in Mongolia in particular, and even going north, obviously, in, in Russian Siberia. Uh, Mongolia was a communist country for a period of 60 some years under heavy influence of Moscow, um, but remained sovereign. So what that meant is 
um, the Soviets were not specifically looking for resources that they had on their own territory. They were looking for resources that were had strategic value for them that um, they thought that uh, had more exploration potential in Mongolia or, or easier exploitation potential as well, including deposits for uranium, copper, et cetera. So <clears throat> as we look at this map, uh, I'm sure many know that Myanmar uh, was until recently a supplier of 60% of tin concentrate imports into China. Uh, obviously, what is going on right now in Myanmar has shut that down. Uh, the latest news is that uh, People's Republic of China is actually pulling troops to the Myanmar, formerly Burmese border, to make sure that there are no there is no spillover of conflict going to China. So there have been certainly some problems within uh, Myanmar and the, the disruption of supplies from Myanmar. This obviously um, uh, underlines the export the importance of diversifying supplies of tin, including you know, places like Africa and certainly Mongolia, which is geographically um, the closest uh, destination for exploring tin here. Our deposit is one of very few known or discovered tin deposits in, in Mongolia. And I'm almost certain that um, probably the biggest the highest grade deposits in the country have not yet been discovered. Mongolia is, um, is a mining country. Uh, the country is not particularly well known in the West, um, but it is the, the only Western style democracy in the region. And for that reason, it uh, presents uh, strategic value to United States, European Union, uh, Japan, and Korea. Uh, Mongolia, in its foreign policy, pursues a policy of third neighbor, looking to foster relationships outside of its two neighbors of Russia and China. In fact, the country's largest copper and gold deposit, Oyotova, uh, which was only discovered 20 years ago or something, um, is being developed by an uh, Anglo-Australian company, as you well know. Uh, it is a resource-rich country, which is recognized as, uh, by IMF as one of the 29 resource-rich developing countries in the world. And mining has an outside significance in the economy, as you can see. 80% of exports, 80% of FDI, 42% of investments, and 22% of GDP. And yet, we are very, very early stage of Mongolia's development as a uh, mining country. Um, some say that the mine, mineral endowment of the country could be comparable to that of Australia, but certainly exploration and development is 100, maybe 150 years behind. Um, this just presents some numbers of Chinese investment in, in Mongolia, China is the largest investor in Mongolia, but still the numbers are uh, quite small. Um, in September of last year, Mongolia's president, Kulsuk visited Xi Jinping, the Chinese president Xi Jinping, and um, they signed a number of agreements, part of which was uh, essentially a direct order by Xi Jinping to his ministries and um, state-owned enterprises to double trade with Mongolia and to incentivize this increase in trade the central government in Beijing is offering um, near no interest loans to Chinese companies that are looking to invest in Mongolia. So again, overview of the country, um, it is a fast growing democracy as of last quarter, uh, uh, third quarter of 2023, the country grew 7% in GDP, has, uh, friendly relations with both of its neighbors, China and Russia, no border disputes. It is recognized as home of some of the largest natural resource deposits, many of which have been discovered only in the last two decades and many more to come. Uh, we have companies such as Erdin Resources in Mongolia that discovered an entire gold district. 
So this is happening. Um, it is, as mentioned, uh, a democracy that has had successful peaceful transfers of power since 1991. Uh, right now, there's a supermajority government. Uh, it is, um, uh, was elected on the platform of long-term development of uh, the economy, including the mining sector, in favor of policy choice towards business and foreign investment. And the last point it should not be, um, probably has more significance nowadays than ever. Mongolia is 95% ethnic Mongol. So the country essentially has no risks of ethnic, religious, or international conflict. So our project, in sum, it's a relatively high grade, 0.65% thin content, open pitable project. All known mineralization is from surface down to 110 meters only. We have a historic resource of 47,000 tons of contained tin, a lot more exploration upside. Um, and we are finalizing um, a compliant resource very, very shortly. And part of it is the qualified person needs to travel to Mongolia and sign off on the documents. Um, Infrastructure-wise, I will talk um, from the map on the next page. This is the country. Ulaanbaatar is the capital city, about halfway between Ulaanbaatar and the Chinese rail port of Irain. Uh, sits our project. It's only 100 kilometers from the rail port of Chor. As mentioned before, it is in a um, semi-arid desert area with no population. There, there are maybe two nomadic families that um, have pastures in the area, but that's about it. Um, myself and um, board members, I won't go too much into it, but I was already introduced. Uh, the unique thing about our company is that we are a Canadian company that follows Canadian standards for technical reporting and um, uh, business practices overall, uh, yet we are majority locally Mongolian owned, namely my family owns majority of the shares. It's a vast country with limited infrastructure, but our project uh, has been uh, quite lucky in its location. Um, as mentioned, the rail line is not too far and the 35 kilovolt power line goes through our concession. This is the overall um, system. It's an area of uh, about three by five kilometers or so. Um, there are eight mineralized zones and only some of them have been drilled to date. And um, resources summarized here. It is a magnetite scarring system, which means that the thin mineralization is associated with magnetite. So it's very easy to see um, where these ore bodies are using magnetics. And then you can see that um, the ore bodies that light up here, Eastern zone, Northern zone, um, they're open at strike and certainly at depth. When we did uh, twin hole drilling, uh, the mineralization continued at depth. So um, there's a lot of upside on our resource in terms of undrilled, um, mineralized zones, as well as the uh, zones that have been drilled to a certain extent. Again, to give you some historical context, exploration on this project was halted essentially in 1989 as uh, Soviet Union was facing a collapse and all the subsidies and financing for uh, exploration activities in Mongolia were brought to halt. We conducted some drilling to um, verify the historical numbers. Generally speaking, um, people who are familiar with the region and familiar with the Soviet standard reports have high degree of confidence in the historical numbers. 
uh, what we have discovered that is that um, due to low um, uh, core recoveries, um, the grades that we drill, the assays that we show on our drill holes tend to be quite significantly higher than what was reported historically. Case in point, drill hole 07C will assay 43 meters at almost 2% tin, and the historical number shows 42 and a half meters at 0.8%, so more than um, twice the grade. Uh, historical core recoveries, as I mentioned, have been poor uh, in the 15, 60% range, and as you all know, citrate is, uh, is quite heavy and uh, tends to get uh, lost in fines. Being a polymetallic uh, project, obviously metallurgy uh, has always been the main um, area that we needed to de-risk. Um, we have done some work, uh, but there is more work to be done. Um, essentially what we were able to confirm is that all tin mineralization is in cassiterite. There are no other tin bearing minerals that are harder to extract. And we were able to, in the first stage, recover 82.4% in of tin in a non-magnetic product, but a low grade concentrate. Um, the more recent metallurgical work that we conducted um, using just physical separation, we were able to uh, get a concentrate of 45.5% grade with about 37.5% recovery. Regrinding and recleaning, uh, resulted in producing a concentrate with 58% tin grade. Um, this processing has not been optimized. So our metallurgists are fairly confident that we can reach at least 50% recovery rates uh, for our project. Again, this work is yet to be done. Also, as mentioned, uh, the tin is associated with uh, magnetite and as a byproduct, we are um, very likely to generate a high-grade magnetite concentrate, which certainly will affect our economics, as well as even consideration for um, uh, the actual you know, pit design. Uh, this is a preliminary uh, flow sheet. Um, so far, flotation uh, has not yielded great results for, the, for tin, but um, we are able to recover high-grade zinc concentrates. Um, so generally for tin, we're looking mostly uh, for gravity and magnetic and gravity separation. So um, we are looking for strategic partners and we are in a number of uh, discussions with mostly Asia-based companies uh, given you know, the previously mentioned retrenchment, regional retrenchment. So we have uh, a number of discussions ongoing. Certainly, um, um, tin producers and smelters in, in China uh, need to diversify and uh, their sources of supply. Um, Inner Mongolia is, you know, obviously 300 kilometers just south of us, uh, is emerging as a new center of tin processing. So all of these factors make uh, our project quite interesting for Chinese as well as other Asia-based um, investors. So um, that generally concludes my presentation and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if anybody has. Great, wonderful, thank you very much.